Hello and good morning, everybody, for this 19th Iron and Steel Summit and Expo. As, as the name suggests, it is the 19th time that we are holding this uh, event, Iron and Steel Summit. Uh, to tell you a short history of this event, it started uh, in, uh, uh, in Raipur city, I think in 2003 or something. And then uh, it got, uh, you know, it got popularized. It was that time, that was the time when mini sponge and industry was getting involved in Chhattisgarh and the surrounding states. And uh, this conference served as a good technical, uh, uh, I would say technical backbone or say a lot of the, the, for this growing industry. Lot of uh, new technologies were being discussed, were, were presented, the market scenarios, different future market scenarios were discussed and debated. So in all, I would say that this conference, yearly conference it was, and it was very well attended. I, would, I remember more than 150, 200 people used to attend in Raipur. And uh, so it was a very well received conference for that region, a very well awaited conference for that region region but of course after covid all this stopped and we uh, we uh, went uh, we uh, transformed into a digital platform and now all our conferences are taking place on digital platform so this conference basically is uh, for uh, the iron and steel industry the processing which goes into iron and steel industry various methods and processes various technologies and also the market scenario which is affecting the production and the consumption of steel industry still in this country. So having said this, now we are on this 19th edition of Iron and Steel Summit. One more addition on the, in this 19th uh, uh, edition is that uh, since COVID, we have, uh, we have done a lot of work on the promotion of these such uh, digital events. And uh, I'm happy to share with you that now uh, after two years or more than that of COVID uh, pandemic, uh, uh, pandemic, now we have, uh, I would not say mastered, but we have understood this technology of promoting and specific, uh, specifically promoting in the areas where steel industry is active, not only in our country, but abroad also. Various regions and various uh, continents we are specifically targeting for promoting such events. So in true sense, this digital event can, if uh, promoted and if marketed properly, it can give you a global penetration, a global reach, I would say. So uh, let's uh, take it from there. And uh, having said this, I would uh, welcome uh, dignitaries uh, for this inauguration session of this INN, 19th Iron and Steel Summit and Expo. I would welcome Mr. V. R. Sharma, uh, Managing Director of JS, JSPL. V. R. Sharma, sir, doesn't need any introduction in uh, steel industry, not only in Indian, but global steel industry. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sharma, and thank you for uh, taking out some time for this inauguration session of this 19th INS Steel Summit. I would welcome uh, Mr. D. Kashiva. Mr. D. Kashiva also doesn't need any introduction in Indian steel sector. So he has spent a lot, lot of years in Ministry of Steel as technical advisor, and now he is executive director and leading the flag of Sponge and Manufacturers Association uh, uh, and, uh, and their activities in this country. Thank you, Mr. Kashiva, Kashiva for being with us and sparing some time for us. And uh, I would also welcome Mr. Ranjan Kumar Padi. Uh, Ranjan Kumar Padi has spent a lot of years, though I think uh, electronics uh, graduate in electronics and co communication, but uh, uh, has now come to JPC and he has literally become the backbone of JPC database and compiling of database every year, every month. And uh, that is how we know the pulse of the Indian iron and steel industry due to JPC and the man behind that is Mr. Ranjan Kumar Padi. So thank you very much, Mr. Ranjan, uh, for sparing some time for us. And uh, I would uh, first request Mr. Ranjan only to uh, say something about uh, this event. Uh, JPC has been, incidentally, JPC has been always supporting and participating in this event, whether it is a physical event or whether it is a digital event. And this time also JPC is our knowledge partner for this event. Thank you, Joint Plan Committee, for being with us for so long, long period. I think, uh, I think uh, every 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 uh, Raipur event, you are either you yes, or sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sansen or Mr. Ranjan Bandopadhyay were there. 
So uh, we are very grateful for Joint Plan Committee for being with us. And I would uh, now request Mr. Ranjan only to say a few words on this occasion. Mr. Ranjan, please. Thank you, Chandigar, sir. It is good, good morning to all the dignitaries in the inauguration session, the guests, <laughs> participants in the conference. We are always thankful to Mr. Chandigar for inviting JPC, and JPC is one of the part of the, the seminar since 2007. I think 2007, I always present in the Raipur seminar. And from the pandemic year 2020, 2021, 22, we are also joining in the virtual mode. So thank you to Chandigarh to continue this event, or continue this conference, even in physical mode or in virtual mode, so that we will interact with each other to know what is going on in the present scenario of the steel industry and what are the future forecasting made by government of India and what are the planning and benefits it will going to steel industry that we will discuss in different platforms. So this Iron Steel Summit, it is one of the best platform where we can discuss the issues and the benefits related to our steel industry. If we think about the pandemic year during 2021-22, everybody is saying that 2021-22 that is a pandemic year, but it is a good news for the iron and steel industry that in this year, we have achieved a capacity of 154.2 million ton crude steel capacity, which is added another 10 million ton from 2021. And also, it is a great news for our industry that we have produced 120 million ton of crude steel with this pandemic year 21 and 22. And our Honorable Steel Minister, it is also announced to the Parliament Standing Committee, we have reported to Parliament and in different uh, conferences, different platforms, it is announced that India has achieved 120 million ton of steel production, which is a growth of 15.9, around 16% uh, growth as compared to the last year. Even if you will recall those who are present in the uh, 21 conference of this iron steel, that means 18th iron steel conference. So it is a question that whether we will achieve 110 million ton. So at that time I was there and I as per our forecast, we say that we will achieve more than 100 million ton, 110 million ton. And just seven days back, we have released our MIS report. And it is for, it is reported that we have achieved 120.127 million ton of food steel capacity through different routes. Similarly, even during 21-22, we have achieved 113.6 million ton of finished steel production out of that. It is consumed 105.8 million ton in our country, which is a very good news for our iron steel producers. Then if you go into for the international trade, it is also better news. Prior to 2019, we are the net importer. But however, from 19 onwards, we are the net exporter. And in last year, we have exported around 13.5 million ton, out of which 2.9 million ton in long product and 10.6 in the flat product. Whereas we have a negligible amount of import is there, which is 4.7 million ton out of wherever if you compare to previous year, even we import the export the long product, but nowadays we, it is only 0 0.36 million ton we are importing and long product and 4.3 million ton of flat product we are importing. The global steel prices, if you will compare due to these two regions that are there, the global, global steel prices remain under pressure. Due to one is the major issue, everybody know the uh, war conflict between Russia and Ukraine, which is the major impact in the uh, raw material and the logistics. Second is due to this rise in COVID-19 cases in China, which is impacting both supply and demand side movements. Steel price demand, uh, steel price remain northbound during this March 2022, but it will be gradually increase and the in the future forthcoming days, the steel price will be increased. If you go see the government reports, which is released by different uh, authorities, you will see that in the, the during this third quarter of the uh, last financial year, India having a growth of 5.4% in GDP. If you see the IAP index in the during this April February, it is rising 12.5%, and in the if you will compare only in the uh, eight core uh, sector industry, the steel, still it is rising in 16.9, which is a, almost the last five years high. 
in the steel sector and if you compare only in the march it is 3.7 and if you one is good news it is that in the eight core industry steel having a weight of 17.92 which is very good news for the iron and steel industries again the government having forecast different issues right whenever we are moving to green steel jpc has compiled recently a snapshot survey based on the charge mix in the charge mix it is found that 1920 we have a uh, scrap mix is it is 55% however in the 21 22 it will rise to 60% we saw that we are, our trend is moving towards the green steel similarly if you see that government is forecasting on the green steel and different conferences are going on based upon this green steel Sim the government of india having a meeting with the different steel producers steel associations like ifa sponsor and association pellet association and having a projection for 2030 as well as for the successful completion of 100 years that means 2047 in this forecast government is planning and discussion as for the Uh, expansion plan and as for the uh, upcoming projects of the main players smaller players as well as the associations government recommended that in 2047 we may achieve 500 million ton through different routes which is through a green steel or other platforms now india is for 2047 we are forecasting towards the green steel reduction of carbon dioxide emission and other many more projects in the concept of atmanirbhar bharat we are releasing that bande mataram speed trains sports complex infrastructure projects through road uh, flyovers and river corridors in which this atmanirbhar bharat we may use a huge quantity of steel so that it is a domestic demand that we may produce the steel so that we may stop the import from other countries and our domestic production will be consumed in different sectors which government may going to launch the different projects if you see in the last year production even in the long product we have produced 45.8 million ton virgin rods out of which only 33 uh, major contribution is 33.4 million ton of tmt which indicates that we are increasing the construction sectors and even in the eight core uh, industry it is really eight core sector it is relates the cement growth having 20.8 which is the highest growth in the eight core industries so the steel is growing cement is growing that means it's give a indication that our construction sector during this last year which is the halt for due to some covid reason and other issues but in the last year it will be started growing and several projects which are in the downline it will be started and the people are getting their homes shelters and whatever the their as per their policy it will be getting the benefits so for 22 to 23 if we forecast we have a make a survey regarding this when the government of india having a discussion for the 2047 project jpc one of the participant and jpc make a small study that within this 2030 how much capacity we are going to add in the secondary sector because the big players who are the the so main producers they have a plan for 10 years 20 years but the secondary sector especially in the induction furnace and small mini blast furnace how much quantity of capacity addition is going up to 2030 so in that survey we are getting 20 to 23 we are adding another 3 to 4 million ton capacity by 25 we are adding another 10 and by 30 we are adding another 15 million ton that means in 2030 in the secondary sector having a major contribution and it will be adding another 35 uh, 20 28 to 30 million ton capacity if the all the policy and uh, government implementation plans it will be in their favor so around 30 to 35 million ton of secondary sector capacity will be added out of which we are getting around 25 to 30 million ton of crude steel production similarly for big players as per our national steel policy we are planning that we will achieve in 2030 300 million ton and last uh, in the month of april there is a high level meeting chaired by minister honorable minister and the producers they are giving their future plans so it will be calculated that as per national steel policy we are achieving 300 million ton in 2030 
so this is a good and mane uh, we may say that it is a good news for the steel producers so that if all the things happen to it is a target so if this ibs this conference will be a very successful conference and the expo also successful thank you jandekar sir once again for giving a chance to jpc to give its views thank you mr ranjan and as always it was full of facts and figures and this is what we expect from jpc jpc is the custodian final custodian of the all database of india related to indian iron and steel industry and uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing that with us from time to time and now also uh, now i would go to mr kashiwa ha now yeah now i would uh, request mr kashiwa to say few words on this occasion mr kashiwa please i would like to first hear mr vr sharma ji my guru <laughs> sharma ji ka to uh, sir the, the senior most person speaks at the last that is no 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 koi baat nahi i am not senior but uh, uh, main 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 apne views de deta hu kashiwa sahab no problem thank you very much aap uh, kile bolenge chalo kab bolenge ha nahi hamare dost hain kashiwa ji inhone acha zahir ki hai so definitely i'll speak first sir. so thank good you, morning uh, ladies and gentlemen yes, good please, morning uh, yeah good morning everybody good morning ranjit ji uh, dipendra kashiwa ji thank you uh, madam uh, uh, madam is already here today and the sushmita ji and uh, my all other friends uh, those who are attending this uh, webinar uh, we have seen in last uh, two and a half months time uh, the the economy has gone uh, uh, ups and down uh, because of the uh, war in between russia and uh, ukraine now uh, after having felt a heat for about 75 to 80 days the world is is at the verge of compromising so uh, everywhere the people have started uh, accepting and adapting the consume less theory people are not holding steel people are not holding commodities uh, people now uh, they know that this war is not going to end this may take 6 month may take another one year may take two years uh, this will continue so uh, what the world is now uh, adapting that let this war keep on go keep on uh, uh, doing whatever they want to do let uh, russia and ukraine fight but uh, we have to find out our own solutions so be it stock market be it energy market be it coal market be it steel market i mean the peak what we have seen when the war was on its peak say about 3 uh, weeks or 4 weeks after the war was erupted so uh, that peak is now no more so we have started seeing for the last 15 days the world is coming down and coming down in terms of uh, uh, consumptions uh, there are uh, no holdings no additional stocks and traders uh, everywhere in the world whether it is metal traders or it is steel traders they have now understood that we have to have only that much of stock which is sellable at a comfortable price and which is affordable to the people now uh, Uh, i would say uh, sometimes we say that this is a good effect sometimes we say it is a bad effect but uh, for long term uh, sustainability i think this is a good effect that people have started understanding that uh, uh, let this war go on and we have to survive because uh, there are uh, 7.6 or 7.8 billion people in the world so they have to live and they have to survive in in a much better way as far as any threat in terms of nuclear Uh, a war or anything like that or a world war i mean that threat is i think is receded now because the peak has already come and from peak the declining stage has already already started so i don't think that there will be any nuclear war or any uh, any further uh, devastation uh, which will uh, which will create troubles for uh, for ukraine or for the rest of the europe but this will continue this may continue for another 3 months 6 months 1 year uh, till the time nato sports uh, ukraine and till the time uh, the uh, russians they have the arms and ammunition this will go on so now what is to be done so the uh, situation is very simple uh, the world has to get up together and we have to come to the 
old business. The old business used to be the oil should somewhere about 75 to 78 dollars per barrel. The coal should come down to about 200, 250 dollars per barrel. The steam coal should come down to about 150, uh, 150 dollars per ton, and uh, coal cooking coal 250 dollars per ton. Iron ore should be somewhere about 110 dollars per ton, and uh, the other consumables like pyrolyze, uh, metals, manganese metals, uh, vanadium, ferrovanadium zinc, aluminium, they should come down to a level of about $1,800 zinc and about uh, sixteen sorry $2,000 zinc and $1,800 of aluminium. The uh, nickel should come down to a level of about uh, $20,000, $22,000 a ton. And uh, uh, overall steel should come down to about $600 to $650 a ton. So I think uh, uh, we all are heading towards that. Initially, we are feeling a pinch today that uh, the market is down, but finally, uh, the uh, users as well as uh, the manufacturers, they all will gain. We as a steel industry, we always appreciate that the steel should be affordable. If our customers, they cannot afford buying steel, uh, then there is no, no point or no, no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, no reason that we should be in this business. So our customers should be uh, in a position to afford uh, the, the the steel, and this is what we are working now to achieve this. We have to find out the ways that how to achieve and how to remain profitable even if, even at a level of six hundred or six hundred fifty dollars per ton. So uh, when we say six hundred or six hundred fifty dollars per ton, I assume personally that the oil should be about seventy five to seventy eight dollars per barrel and cooking coal should be about $250, and steam coal should be about $150 per ton. In India, the cooking, the steam coal has touched as high as uh, 11,000 to 12,000 rupees a ton. This should come down to about 4,000 to 4,500 rupees a ton. Today, government of India is transporting uh, more than 490 or 496 uh, uh, trains or goods trains uh, in a day. Uh, transporting coal from uh, coal belts to different part of the country. What we are suggesting to government of India that we should stop this coal transportation, transporting energy and consuming energy. Today, uh, okay, the, the coal prices are higher, but there was a time about two years back when the coal prices were about 4,000 rupees a ton, and the freight is also about 3,000 rupees a ton. So when 80% of the uh, component and a final landed price of the coal from Kashmir to Kanyamakumari is transport. That means uh, this is not a happy situation. So in, in times to come, uh, we have to see that how to effectively utilize coal uh, to uh, without damaging the climate. And that uh, solution is to convert coal into gas. And uh, once we convert coal into gas, that is same gas, or the raw gas, this should be used in integrated combined cycle uh, gas, uh, integrated gas combined cycle power plants, IGCC. And we should produce power through coal gasification on the pit heads. There is no point transporting coal to Rajasthan, to Jammu and Kashmir, and then to Tamil Nadu uh, from uh, eastern belt of the country, from Jharkhand or from Odisha or from Chhattisgarh. We should transport electricity. When we transport electricity, that means more and more transmission towers will come, more and more steel will be used. And uh, when we transport through uh, uh, through uh, electricity, uh, I mean through conductors, through transmission towers, then the transporting energy, say about 4,000 kilocalorie or equivalent, will not cost 3,000 rupees. So this is to be pondered upon because uh, today the freight is 3,000 rupees to Tamil Nadu. So it will definitely be less than 3,000 rupees when we have an equivalent calorific value So uh, in kilowatt. So this is what uh, government of India should look into. It is not easy job. This will take about 10 years time, but we have to, uh, we have uh, until 2070, we have to be net zero uh, in terms of emission, net carbon zero. So I think we can afford putting in next 10 years time, we can afford putting uh, gas-based combined cycle power plants in the uh, in the in the coal belt, so that we do not transport coal. When we transport coal, one is the complete track is occupied. Number two, the complete ecosystem is uh, is disturbed. 
then we engage uh, our most of the goods trains like today 500 trains per day as a huge uh, rolling stock so that will come uh, that will be available uh, to uh, general goods transportation uh, so i think government will definitely look into uh, this particular matter in times to come that uh, government must try to gasify the coal and use coal for power generation and also use coal for the urea and fertilizer manufacturing now uh, uh, ministry of coal and uh, also ministry of finance uh, after the budget speech of madam nirmala sitaraman ji uh, they have come to a point that 100 million ton coal is to be gasified so uh, about 10 days back there was a conference in bombay and uh, a, a pledge was taken that yes we will be gasifying the coal and we are utilizing coal in a most environmental friendly manner the another area is i would like to give you very uh, uh, very um, interesting uh, break up uh, the uh, china has produced 33 million ton of hydrogen last year out of 33 million ton hydrogen more than 20 million ton has been produced from coal to hydrogen 15 uh, million ton uh, sorry 20 million ton has been produced from coal to hydrogen 7 million ton has been produced through natural gas to hydrogen and balance has been produced through the city waste and the biomass to hydrogen so uh, we are discussing with uh, many companies in the world where we can convert city waste or you can say the municipal waste into hydrogen and also uh, the issue of like uh, prali burning by the farmers in haryana punjab up and rajasthan and maybe other part of the country also all this prali can be converted into hydrogen so now yesterday there was a company uh, from europe they were here in india they were, they were talking to various uh, city authorities uh, and they are proposing them to have a hydrogen plant uh, based out of uh, city waste or even the pralis so i think this is a very good move yesterday that team also met me and uh, uh, they explained how serious are they in converting city waste into hydrogen so i think the time has come to utilize hydrogen and to reduce to kind of, to produce hydrogen and reduce the impact on the climate so we and jindal jspl we have taken a decision that we will uh, we will produce 50% steel through the electric arc furnaces based on dri and 50% steel through the blast furnaces we are not advocating more and more blast furnaces in the country we are telling to government to come out with a regulation that if somebody wants to expand, they should expand 50-50, 50% through DRI route and 50% through the blast furnaces route. Then only we can <clears throat> neutralize the effect. The another area is the blast, the, in, in the blast furnaces, we are working now how to inject the synthesis gas, that is coal gas. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this project uh, we have undertaken about three months back. This is about to be completed. We will commission it maybe in next four to five months time that will be injecting syn gas into blast furnace. Then the another area is we have already started injecting long back the cocoon gas into DRI plant. This is the first time that uh, any company has introduced cocoon gas adding into the, into the DRI plants. So this is also a very wonderful uh, technique. We have achieved it, uh, I would say we have mastered it. So now coming back on the uh, general issues, the steel uh, will not lose its uh, uh, glitter and glare. Uh, steel will continue. We will produce not only 118 million ton, but this year we are aiming to produce about 130 million ton. The consumptions are not less. Yes, temporarily there are some uh, uh, there are some hiccups, roadblocks because of uh, various reasons, you know. Uh, but the international demand is also very good, and uh, China is down because of uh, COVID, and uh, we are getting a substantial share of the Chinese steel industry in the international market. The uh, market is going to remain stable and uh, there should be, a, uh, I would say, a smooth selling in terms of producing and selling steel. The uh, CO2 footprint has to be reduced. Uh, we, has, we have started capturing carbon dioxide. We capture 2,000 ton per day carbon dioxide, CO2. But unfortunately, we do not have users around our Rangul plant. So we have requested uh, Honorable Steel Minister during his last visit on 28th of April to our plant in Angul 
kindly see if a CO2 consumption park or industrial town uh, can be uh, developed in uh, Odisha. The another suggestion we are given to government of India to have a CO2 pipeline starting from Bokaro, Raudkila, Vilai, Jadsukda, Angul, then Jaspur, and finally to Paradeep. And at Paradeep, we should try to put up the CO2 consumption centers where we can invite international players, investors to come and to put up urea manufacturing facility, algae formation facility, or soda ash formation facility, soda ash making facility. And then, you know, government of India can encourage such kind of investors to utilize CO2. And finally, the CO2 will be used. We also suggested to government of India because each company every day they declare that we are going to be two ton per ton of two ton CO2 per ton of steel. Somebody says 2.4 ton CO2 per ton of steel. Somebody says we are at 2.6 ton per ton of steel. And somebody says that will be less than 1.7 ton of CO2 per ton of steel. We have requested government of India to come with a environmental policy and norms for steel industry. Uh, talking in isolation and scoring over each other is not a solution. When we have to meet out Honorable Prime Minister's declaration that we will be a net emission or net carbon free country by 2070, then steel industry uh, must be governed uh, by a policy where government of India should come with a, uh, with a, with a policy a paper that by 2040, the steel industry has to come to this level of CO2. And to reach to this level of CO2, these are the following techniques and technologies available so that the steel industry adopt and negotiate these technologies with the international or domestic uh, uh, technology suppliers at length. And uh, then, the, uh, then the entire steel industry will get benefit out of it. Because talking to one company in isolation, then another company in other silos, that means the dissemination of knowledge is not taking place. And if we have to jointly uh, address the uh, and achieve the uh, target given by Honorable Prime Minister, then we have to jointly find, find out that how can we reduce the CO2 emission and the CO2 footprint as a whole for the steel industry. And the best is that government of India should come out with a policy paper and suggestions that this much of CO2 is permitted. And now you work on this, whether you stop your blast furnaces and put electric arc furnaces, whether you stop your central plant and put the pellet plants, whether you stop your, uh, reduce your uh, hot metal to blast furnaces, bio fruit, and you come through the electric arc furnaces and DRI route. So, you know, then people will start pondering upon. Otherwise, many people, they speak that we are very concerned about CO2, but when we see on the ground, the actions are very less. The another area is the uh, green power. Uh, everybody is speaking on green energy, green power, renewable energy. Uh, but I think uh, steel industry is not in a position to enter into a business of power manufacturing, power generation, uh, because most of the power plants will be on the western, western part of the country, and most of the steel mills are on the eastern part of the country. So I think uh, the private investors, multinational investors, investors or government of India's participation is required. Uh, to put up the uh, solar energy parks and wind energy parks in the areas where the PLF or the, uh, uh, the plant load factor of the overall should be about 25%, uh, which at present is not existing in as per the studies available in the eastern belt of the country. So I think uh, it, it is the western part of the country where we can produce solar as well as wind energy. And finally, we should transport it to the steel mills. The steel mills should buy uh, the power from outside, uh, that is uh, the solar power. Uh, last time when the American Foreign Secretary was here in the country, I think there was a document uh, uh, declared that 450 gigawatt of uh, solar energy will be, uh, will be the requirement in the country and this will be done in the next eight to 10 years time. Uh, for that, uh, if the new investors are, are attracted uh, by way of policies, and then definitely steel industry will be in a position to buy the uh, green energy from this com these companies. But it will be very difficult for the steel industry to put up the plant in Rajasthan and then they transport the energy to Odisha. It will be very difficult. I think this is a specialized job and uh, the companies, those who have shown the interest like Adani, 
and also Ambani uh, family, uh, if they come forward and they put up the uh, 200, 300, 400 gigawatt of energy, which will give about 25%, that means 400 gigawatt will give 100 gigawatt only. Today, the country's requirement is 220 gigawatt daily. So if we produce 100 gigawatt in next five to seven years time, the country's requirement will be daily 350 gigawatt. So there's still, there'll be a gap of about 250 gigawatt. The gap today is similar. So after five years, it'll also be similar. So uh, uh, I think a great amount of efforts are required in terms of bringing investments in this particular field. So this is my suggestion to, uh, to everybody. I have spoken all these words in front of all of you so that we all are on the same page. You may agree on some of the points and you may not agree on many of the points, but the points where we all agree, we should speak so that slowly, gradually, this will be learned, listened, and implemented by the respected uh, governments and also by the different uh, uh, policy makers in the country. So, uh, so thank you very much. Before I close uh, my, my speech, I would again say the time is not bad, time is very good. Uh, the world has started uh, appreciating the consume less theory. That means the vestiges will be controlled. When you see the consume less, then automatically the CO2 level will be reduced. When we see the consume less, then a common man uh, can afford uh, any kind of product uh, which is required. Uh, I think uh, we are coming to the realistic situation. The world is, has, has uh, uh, consoled itself that the war is going to be continued for longer terms. The rest all depends upon the circumstances and upon Mr. Zelensky and Mr. Putin, how fast they sit on the table. But today, the people, many countries are not allowing them to sit on the table because they are they have their own vested interest, maybe. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Namaskar. Thank you very much, Sharma sir. Thank you very much, Sharma sir, for your for your uh, for your speech. It was really very uh, very in depth and very insightful about the steel industry, not only Indian steel industry but global steel industry. And I I do agree with you, sir, that energy management is the most crucial issue of the industry. If we manage the energy well, I think. Yeah, we will have full control over the industry and uh, thanks for your words that uh, we are uh, slowly normalizing the industry is slowly normalizing and you see a smooth ride ahead in terms of consumption and production of steel so that's a very uh, heartening news and heartening to hear that thank you very much sharma sir for sparing time uh, and being with us for some time thank you very much now i would uh, request mr b kashiva uh, for his uh, words and for his thoughts. Mr. Kashiwa, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chandigarh, uh, for giving me an opportunity to put forth my views. Uh, but uh, talking after V. R. Sharma is really a challenge, but it, uh, you I have to be blamed. I have to be you, blamed. You only offered for that. Problems, <laughs> because I invited my problems. But I want to hear him because I know his time very valuable. He may be distracted because of some urgent work, so I, I uh, suggest a, oh, let him speak to him first. But his range of the topic which he covers, my God, from Ukraine, Russia, the logistics, from the raw material security, from the RE, from the hydrogen, from the sink gas. Uh, I, I think so much range of a topic, no speaker I have uh, in my 50 years of life in the steel industry, I've never seen any speaker to cover so many areas. Anyway, let me come to my uh, uh, views on certain topic, although I almost agree of all the views which he has expressed, but I have certain doubts and I will request Mr. Sharma to remain here to, to, to please respond to my doubts, my some questions. And uh, Mr. Ranjan has given a uh, insight of a Indian steel industry. He has quantified the growth and uh, he has intensified the uh, he has intensified the growth uh, uh, of the uh, Indian steel sector during the 2001 and two. But let me recapitulate once again uh, uh, what has happened and um, uh, about the uh, last year, in spite of so many challenges and so many. Uh, uh, issues. 
uh, we have a growth of uh, crude steel production 16% and we have a growth of 14% uh, in the sponge iron sector. I think the, and we reached to a level of uh, 39 million ton, which is really a, 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 really a record breaking. We have never produced 39 million ton in the history of the 42 years history of the uh, DRI industry. Uh, in spite of so many challenges, in spite of the COVID, in spite of the raw material issues, all that. So, so uh, it has been a uh, very good year and the price uh, net sale realization was also very good. And uh, most of the iron and steel producers uh, have a very respectful now been their balance sheet as far as the 2021-22 is concerned. Now, let me say what is going to happen in the future. Uh, Mr. Ranjan has said that uh, we are going to uh, add around 40 million tons in the uh, beer, beer route and around 15 to 20 million tons in the second steel sector. If you look into the, uh, uh, the new steel policy which was declared 2017, uh, they have envisaged the capacity. These figures have been repeated several times, but they have envisaged uh, uh, the installed capacity of uh, 300 million ton and uh, uh, the production of 255 million ton. I think these are uh, very challenging issues. Uh, we are not going to achieve this thing. Uh, we, are, we are just still in the 120 million ton and reaching to the 255 million ton in another 135 million ton in another seven, eight years is a very, very difficult task. Uh, likewise, in the sponge iron sector, they have envisaged a demand of 80 million ton. We are uh, at the moment 30, 39 million ton. And we can at the best if the uh, uh, raw material issues are uh, settled, we may reach around 50 to 55 million ton by 2030-31. So, so uh, and now, now the Ministry of Steel is engaged in preparing a vision document for 2047, wherein they have envisaged the, the capacity, steel capacity of uh, 500 million ton and steel production of uh, 400 million ton. Uh, if you consider the present trend of making the steel, then if we take into 60% contribution from the uh, BFBF route and 40% from the so-called secondary steel sector, then we will be producing around uh, uh, 160 million ton of uh, steel by 2047. And for that, the metallic requirement uh, would be around uh, 192 million ton. And if we consider that 50% will come from the uh, scrap and 50% from the DRI, then the, my DRI requirement would be around uh, uh, would be around one uh, around 70 million ton. So, uh, and we all know that uh, gas is not available, so most of the uh, production will have to come through the coal based route. Uh, 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 now, uh, Sharma Saab has talked about the, the need for reduction of the carbon footprints. Uh, my worries is that we are, uh, we are uh, uh, I am flagging this issue repeatedly at different forums that uh, today we have got around 38 million ton of a coal based capacity which is likely to we are going to add around uh, 3 to 4 million ton next 2 to 3 years so around 42 million ton coal based capacity how we are going to reduce the carbon footprints this is a big challenge we cannot uh, throw away this capacity on one fine uh, morning uh, based on the government media directive or based on a, uh, uh, external pressures which are likely to come definitely uh, the, to reduce, the, India should reduce their carbon footprints. So my worry is, is how we are going to uh, reduce the uh, CO2 emission from this particular route. Uh, there is no technology available uh, so far to substitute the coal by the syn gas or by the green hydrogen or even by the natural gas. So, uh, so um, uh, I think the need of the hour is to have the technology or to increase the R&D activity to, to, to dwell upon this issue. Uh, 
otherwise it is going to be a very 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 big problem in a time to come when we have to meet the targets of reduction of 35% 30 to 35% uh, emissions carbon footprint by 2030 and to be carbon neutral by 2070 it is going to be a big challenge so i uh, i request to everyone here to kindly uh, look up on this issue and suggest the suitable technology uh, how to reduce the carbon footprints or the substitute the carbon uh, in the uh, coal based uh, in the present operating coal based technologies uh, now sharma ji have also spoken that um, there is a divergent views about the uh, co2 emissions in the country different companies and uh, different uh, uh, organization rather i will say are talking about the level of the co2 emission with the country emits in the steel sector um, uh, uh, different uh, big producer as well the small producer have got their own um, method of computing the co2 emissions as far as the dri sector is concerned there is no so far authenticated study has taken place to assess the co2 emission in the sponge iron sector sima uh, has taken a lead and we are uh, doing a joint study with the be and uh, some of the progress has been made and we expect that uh, the, that there will be some uh, clarification on the co2 emissions from the dri sector Uh, as regard to the challenges uh, to achieve the to meet the requirement of the metallics in the country as sharma sir has spoken that uh, that that 50% of the steel production has to come from the driaf route uh, uh, the scrap availability from domestic and international sources is going to be a big challenge it is already short in supply even at this level of production of 120 million ton and uh, uh, the vehicle scrapping policy yet to be implemented in full flow uh, so i think and most of the countries has either banned the export of the scrap or are imposing the higher export duty so i think the choice uh, before the country is to increase the dri sector uh, yes dri sector if it is a, based on a gas route this will be most welcome because the quality will be much better the co2 carbons will be very less it is uh, it is at the order of 1.3 1.25 uh, ton of co2 compared to 3.4 uh, ton of the bf route as it was uh, in the reports of ministry of steel so that will be the best solution i really compliment gspl and sharma ji that they are raising this issue of uh, production or utilization or converting the coal into the gas and then use it for the power generation whether in the steel sector and uh, and in other uh, sectors so uh, the, we have to as you said that the government has a target of uh, converting 100 million ton of coal into the syn gas i wish this should be implemented in full sincerity and should uh, should be available to the uh, to the users particularly to the iron and steel sector now next is the iron ore we are expecting when we produce the 120 million ton but things are improving uh, more and more mines are opening and i think in 2 3 years uh, situation will be normal but the big challenge will be evacuation of that iron iron ore uh, we have the problems we we, we have seen the problems in uh, odisha in uh, chatisgarh racks are not available ships are taking a berth but the racks are not available uh, like that they are the, the and as he said ke around 485 racks are now daily passing but all this is allocated to the power sector to the coal and all that not for the steel sector so evacuation and providing the 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 logistic support for the growing steel sector is also a very big issue uh, i think um, a uh, celery pipeline is also one of the solution and i believe that around 10 to uh, 12 celery pipelines in the barbel area are being conceived uh, and i wish all these pipeline will come through the highway or through the railway track so that the uh, it can be implemented but then again there is a challenge on this issue also about the water requirement water supply so but anyway these things are now being uh, debated uh, gradually and i am sure 
the solution would be uh, found soon now coming to the coal for for my sector coal is a very vital uh, element compared to the power sector power it is only a heating fuel but in the uh, sponge iron sector it is not only a heating fuel it is it has a metallurgical applications also so uh, and now recently the ministry of coal has uh, uh, removed the uh, two classification supply auction of the coal to the regulatory sector and auction of the coal to the non regulatory sector they have abolished and now they feel that uh, steel sector will have a more chance to participate in the auction but i think this is uh, not a good move uh, competing uh, with the giants uh, of ntpc or indalco cement manufacturer like indalco or the vedanta it will be very difficult for the small uh, sponge iron producer to compete with them and to participate and to get the coal allocated to meet their requirement so we have been requesting to the ministry of steel to restore the specific window they have created for the sponge iron sector so that this sector should not only survive but continue to grow uh, then third vital issue is the natural gas we all know natural gas is not available and international prices are more than 32 dollars which used to be around uh, 10 to 12 dollars uh, all that uh, so uh, and i for, don't see any 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 light uh, about the availability of the uh, natural gas in the near future uh, sharma sahab has talked about the need for laying down the pipeline for the uh, syn gas but i have noticed that the the natural gas pipeline uh, uh, which has been laid down by the gale from jagdishpur to haldia is not being utilized uh, they have made a lot of huge investment but no steel plant no pellet plant or no dri plant is coming forward because of the uncertainty and the price of the natural gas so uh, i don't see any solution of the natural gas availability in the gun that and i fully agree with sharma sahab that syn gas is, uh, should be promoted uh, it is a indigenous gas there will not be any uncertainty about its price about its availability a lot of the work is required to be done on this issue but these are my views thank you very much for giving an opportunity to speak and to uh, uh, put forth my views thank you mr chandigarh Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kashiwa. As uh, as we were discussing, it is always difficult to talk of uh, talk after a speaker like Mr. V R Sharma. But I think you made some very valid points, Mr. Kashiwa. Thank you very much for that. In fact, you also emphasized that uh, energy is a very vital uh, element in the whole whole uh, process chain, and uh, energy management, coal management. and uh, logistic will play a big role in the future of uh, indian iron and steel industry thank you very much and uh, uh, you know uh, i think sharma sahab has left he, but i i would like to thank all all the dignitaries which participated in the inauguration session mr ranjan kumar padi from joint plant committee mr d kashiwa from executive director of saima and mr v r sharma uh, managing director of jspl thank you very much and this brings us to the end of the session and uh, we would have a very short break of 5 minutes and we'll start with our next session which is a panel discussion and the uh, the topic uh, is the uh, effect of ukraine russia war on asian steel industry so let's wait for 5 minutes i think uh, we will start at around 11:40 just 5 minutes from now thank you <laughs>